Hi, I'm Janet Payne and I'm the Corporate Proposition Manager for Friends Provident International, currently based in Dubai. I've worked in the corporate savings industry for the last 20 plus years and we've been developing the corporate side of our market within the Middle East for the last two to three years. Hi, I'm Chris Bagnall. I'm the International Risk Manager for Friends Provident. I've been in the industry for 22 years now uh, with a background in underwriting and management. I've been in Dubai for the last two years developing our Middle East protection proposition. Could you tell me a bit about Friends Provident International? Okay, Friends Provident were established in 1832. We've been providing innovative solutions for protection and savings scenarios for the last 177 years. We've been in the Middle East for the last 12 years. Um, under management, funds under management, uh, we currently have 51 billion sterling uh, as of December 2008. We're a FTSE 100 listed company and have been uh, since uh, we listed in July 2001. Uh, we currently have 3,500 employees located around the world uh, including the UK, Dubai, Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, not, many, uh, not many employers and employees in the UAE understand uh, the legal obligations of gratuity payments. Uh, could you elaborate? Well, gratuity has actually become a lot more of a focal point over the last year or so. As I say, I've, I've been in Dubai the last couple of years, and employers and employees are becoming more aware of the need to fund for gratuity and the fact that there is an entitlement when you leave service. <clears throat> the actual calculation is set out in employment law. It's quite simple. It's 21 days per annum for each year of service that you have for the first five years, and then it's 30 days of service for each year thereafter, once you've completed a full year with your employer. Uh, this is capped at two times final salary. There are a few other little tweaks depending on if you work in the frozen zones, but that's essentially the standard calculation. Um, you've recently launched the Optus Group Savings Scheme. Do you think in the current scenario, setting funds aside for employees is top of mind for businesses? Well, this has actually become more important to businesses with the current economic climate because obviously they're, they're seeing um, a downturn in the number of staff that they, they need and that means that they are losing staff. And of course, if you lose staff, you then have to pay the gratuity. Companies have historically um, generally funded for gratuity out of their trading accounts, but now they're finding that that's not sufficient and they're looking to put the funds aside. From the companies that we've met, less than 50% actually do have the funds put aside to fund for gratuity, and it is a legal requirement and an obligation that they pay it when somebody leaves service. What, according to you, are a few of the least regarded but highly essential types? Okay, it's very common for businesses to insure against stock, uh, buildings, machinery, um, and that's more of the general insurance uh, side of the business. Um, what small businesses fail to uh, usually identify are much more important assets, and that's the key personnel of their companies. Um, if you take the scenario of, say, the, the sales director, key executives, or technical people involved in product design. If you were to lose one of those key persons through either death or through a critical illness, where they would have to take several years off work, what plans in place do the company have to ensure uh, that they can mitigate, that, mitigate against that loss? Now, what we can provide uh, as a company is key man insurance, and this will pay out either on death of a key employee or on diagnosis of a critical illness. Now, the process really for a small business would be to identify their risks first um, and have a think about what the outcome would be if they lost a key person. Would they be able to survive? Do they have a recruitment process in place? How much is that recruitment and training process going to cost? And what is going to be the result in loss of profits? Key man insurance pays out a lump sum uh, when the insured person 
uh, has an unfortunate event uh, and can help add to those profits and maintain the company. A lot of companies will fail on the loss of one or maybe two key persons and this really should be something that as a small or medium business you should be thinking about. In the current scenario, owing to limited funds, if a business owner were to prioritise, what would be the one policy that they should pick besides key person insurance? Um, well, I just want to go a bit further than the one policy because we also have shareholder protection. And this is where, a uh, again, usually a key person, but a shareholder of the company, usually a director, um, if they were to die, then you would have to look at where the ownership of that company would transfer to. That usually would be to uh, the key person's family. Now they won't, or usually won't, have any experience in running a business uh, or the specific skills to need to, to run that business. Um, the remaining partner would want to buy out the family to ensure that he can maintain the business under his control or her control. Um, so partnership protection um, is a very valuable product to have for this scenario, something that you should plan for. Um, the other product, uh, and this is more for uh, used for employee benefits, is group protection. Uh, group protection is a benefit where the employer provides a level of life cover for all or a specific group of his employees, either for natural causes or for all causes. Um, wouldn't you rather be the employer who, when he's commiserating with a bereaved spouse, is handing over a cheque either for one, two or three times the salary? Because the chances are that the person that um, you are covering is the major wage earner in that family. You obviously do not insure every business that comes your way. Uh, what best practices can regional SMBs adopt? Insurance is quite a specialised area, especially when it comes to small and medium sized businesses. We would recommend that first off you identify your risks, have a business plan in place and then discuss that with an independent financial advisor. These people are highly skilled and will have looked at a lot of businesses in the past and identified where they can mitigate against risk through insurance product products.